What's up, guys? This morning, I had an awesome opportunity to be interviewed by David Sharp. David has brought in over $250 million between all of his companies, so it was an incredible honor to be interviewed by him this morning. I got to talk about my faith and my business, so I wanted to share it with you guys today. Hope you guys enjoy this, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. That being said, hope you guys enjoy. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and bring in, if I can get the technology <laughs> right, Jake. What up, buddy? What's up, man? Good to see you, dude. Dude, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm pumped. Man, so tell us a little bit about yourself before we talk about TikTok. You're a youth pastor in North Carolina. Right. Give us a little bit of the backstory about how you even got into online marketing. Yeah, for sure. Uh, man, there's so many stories I could tell you. I could go all the way back to college. Uh, I was thinking even yesterday about a story where uh, I bought, I had a guy on my hall, paid him five bucks for a study guide, and then uh, sold that study guide to like 500 people in my class. Uh, it's just always been part of who I am. Like I've always had this entrepreneurial itch. Like I just love, I love the hustle. Like I love yeah. the competition of it. Um, I could talk to you about selling sneakers, which was actually a huge part that helped me get out of debt. Okay. Um, high end sneakers, which was just just crazy to me. Right. Uh, did penny stocks. I've done a lot of stuff the over the years. High end sneakers is kind of a bit. It's kind of a little niche in itself, right? Yeah, it is. I yeah, it didn't is. Know that, and then I started getting on some of these apps from buying sneakers fr from home, just ordering mm -hmm. like on the Goat app and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, this is like a whole – and then I heard one of my barbers one day talking about it. And I was like, dude, this is a <laughs> whole little subculture. Um, but okay, cool. So you've done that. You've done penny yeah. stocks. Then what eventually brought you into affiliate marketing and, and kind of what you're doing now? For sure. So beginning of September was the first time I ever heard of Legendary Marketer. Saw a random video on YouTube. Um, no experience with internet marketing. Had heard the term affiliate marketing. Didn't know anything about it. Um, and I just did a ton of research. Like I, I, I researched things a lot. So I heard about LM and just poured for the next two weeks, just trying to figure out what it was about, who you were about the company, uh, and finally joined in. And unfortunately, September was actually the busiest month I have had since I've been on staff at the church. I'd give myself some new projects and I was just slammed. I mean, I was working 15 to 18 hours a day purely on that side of things. So I added this affiliate marketing thing. And when I bought the blueprint. I knew I was going to succeed because I wasn't going to start something that I wasn't willing to succeed on. Um, so I, I struggled through September. Like I'm putting in time with the courses at the end of the day. I'm building my funnel at the end of the day. But this is all brand, brand new to me. Like I am drinking out of a fire hydrant. Uh, so I went to my boss and said, I haven't taken time off since I've been on staff. Can I take the first week of October and the second week of October um, so I can really start pursuing this? And he let me. Uh, and the day before my first day off, I got an email that said, legendary boot camp starting tomorrow. Well, I don't know what a boot camp is, but I've got time off, so I might as well check it out. Um, and not only the blueprint has was a massive part of my success, that boot camp was a huge thing for me. Now, are you talking about the, 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 the video boot camp that we did for 30 days? Yep. Okay. Yep. Dude, you know, it's funny that you bring that up this morning. I feel like we should do another boot camp. Oh, I'm all for like, it, man. Right, oh, like, it's good. What if we did one? I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, we've had a couple With TikTok videos. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm it thinking. Was... To me, creating that uh, that habit of creating content from the very beginning of my business was a game changer for me. Was it? It was huge. And not only that, but the network, because there every single person who was doing the boot camp was in that Facebook group every day, talking to one another, getting to know one another. I've developed incredible friends okay. from those 30 days. So I was a massive fan of it. Wow, dude. Wow. So we're coming out. Jake is another instructor. If you've been tuning in, um, we're, we're releasing a TikTok course. Don't worry. It's not going to be $10,000. It's it's going to be um, just a dollar, <laughs> uh, and if you're an affiliate of Legendary, you can you can you can offer this to get people into our process, into our funnels, into our system. I know not all of you guys who are watching this are affiliates of ours, but if you're interested, then reach out. We'll get you um, either to the person who you're connected through us by, or uh, to to anybody on the LM staff, myself, whatever. We'll get you into the affiliates group. We'll ha let you apply to be an affiliate. Um, we, we'd love you as a customer if you're looking to just learn, which you can learn TikTok when we come out with this course. You can learn about our Business Builder Challenge. Um, there's all kinds of 
courses and information that we have for you. But anyways, I digress. I'm, you know, I'm always, I'm always selling, always be selling, you know, Jake, I mean, can I you, mean, that course is going to be well worth the value. So I don't blame you. Yeah. I mean, for God's sake, it's we're exciting. talking about a dollar here. So anyways, <laughs> though, you're like what you're saying right now, it's kind of interesting because the last couple of days we've had Matt Steinman on mm -hmm. yesterday, we had Dom Bavaro on yeah. and uh, we don't have Jonathan Montoya on. Well, I guess we had him on a couple of last week, but anyways, all four of you guys really who are, we're spotlighting in the community right now. You're taking lots of action. Of course, you're dominating with TikTok, but you guys really all have mentioned that, that, that video challenge, that boot camp that we did. So I think we should I met both uh, Jonathan and Matt in that challenge. Yeah. So, okay. Yep. Just so you guys understand what we're talking about. We basically challenged everybody to do a video a day for 30 days okay and we kind of put everybody in a facebook group held mm -hmm. them accountable didn't charge anybody anything um but we kind of all just yeah we held each other accountable so f what happened during that and then shortly after to continue taking us through the story yeah so we, we had the whole fun with medium for the first 15 days of the challenge and then we got into video right. for the second half um so november and december i'm just i'm killing myself doing youtube videos I mean, a YouTube video here in the beginning, I'm spending, I don't know, three to four hours for the uh, planning for the video, shooting the video, editing the video, posting it, SEO, and everything that comes with that. And I'm doing about five a week at that point. Um, near the end of December, I'm like, okay, I'm fueled by competition. I check leaderboards all the time. Um, and on the LM side, like I just realized there are a handful of guys that I'm never going to be able to compete with. Um, Big Mark, Jay. Nathan Lucas, I mean, I can name five or six guys off the top of my head, all have over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I can't compete with that. But then I see this thing called TikTok and say, you know what? No one's doing this yet, so maybe there's an opportunity for me to compete here. So end of December, I start that. And beginning of January, and I, I won't give away all the story because we talk about it in the training, but January 6th, posted a video one night, woke up the next morning to almost $1,000 purely from a TikTok video that took me 40 seconds to create. And at that point, I said, there's something here. Um, this is actually an opportunity that people haven't started tapping into yet. And I had the opportunity really early with it. Um, so January, February, I am pumping out, still pumping out YouTube content, uh, but really, really focusing on TikTok. And then February became really big for my business. Um, I had started to develop a system with LM. I had four or five traffic sources for it that uh, had kind of started becoming an autopilot. Um, so I, I wanted to add something else to my business. So I actually bought a white label digital product for my business, started marketing it to Christian entrepreneurs. And what was so cool to me is both of these things built on one another. You said something a while back uh, that you shouldn't stop the affiliate marketing side because affiliate marketing is a blast because there's no customer support, which I didn't appreciate when you said it. I absolutely do now. Um, so I had a system here and then I started marketing to Christian entrepreneurs and I had these two things that worked so well together. Yeah. The thing for Christian entrepreneurs for, was for lead generation for people who already had businesses. But every day I was getting a message saying, hey, Jake, I love what you're doing. I, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to create a business, but I don't know how to get started. What do you suggest? Well, let me give you the exact path that I took. And then I pointed them to LM. So I loved it because Ellen has been so good to me and I had found so much success with it that I love making that connection. Yeah. And as people went through legendary marketer, now I can say here, I have this uh, product for you. That's going to help with lead generation. Mm. So beginning to see these things compounding on each other has just been super exciting for me. Let's dial into the niche that you, well, you're already a part of. You're a mm -hmm. youth pastor in North Carolina. So, yep. um, that's, that's, that's who you are you know, not totally, but a part of your life, your faith, uh, your your service that you do there, which is, I would assume, your passion. And ultimately, yep, absolutely. ultimately, now you are using you are you are you are using a a bridge uh, sort of effect here to say, OK, you know, um, I've always liked to kind of joke around with with uh, Christian entrepreneurs and say, you know, hey, I mean, God probably doesn't want you to be poor. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, truthfully, even even for mine, I think there's a, a heavy responsibility on believers to be good stewards of the money we have. Sure. And I think a lot aren't. So that was a big part of it for me coming in. Like I can help people who just struggle stewarding their money. Well, and if you want to serve more people, I mean, yeah. if you have a mission, guys, or a passion and 
I don't care if it's that you want to, you know, share the gospel with more people around the world. I don't care if it's that you want to uh, help build water wells in Africa. I don't care if it's that you want to get out a message about vaccines or you're an anti-vaccine person or whatever your message is, right? <laughs> um, you can't do it without money. And this is something that I look, I mean, l- let me let me digress a little bit. I, I came into 12-step recovery and I've been able to get help and give help without money. So I don't want to say that you can't serve people without money. That that's not true. I want to I want to be super clear about this because I don't want to come out off as a as a, you know, as somebody who's out of touch with reality. But if you want to do things on a larger scale, your particular goal which kind of hit me hit home for me was that you wanted to start a um I forgot the phrase that you used. A church plant. Okay, a church plant yep. which is essentially what what it sounds like it's it's growing a new church community and you wanted yep. to do that without what 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 is your I, I want you to say your goal and not I don't want to explain it so explain to yeah, people for sure. what your mission uh, and goal is kind of behind this your bigger why yeah absolutely um so I've always I have a friend that I went to college with we've talked about for years that we wanted a church plant together in the future um, but I'm just on the conviction I, I don't want to have to ask other churches to support us or other people to support us. Because then they have they have some level of control in what you're doing, and I'm a control freak. I mean, that's one of my maybe <laughs> maybe a really positive, maybe a negative, depending on the day. I, I hate people having control or say into my life like that. Um, so I wanted to be fully funded, so I'd be able to church plant without needing the support of other churches or other people. Mm. So it's it's why I got started in affiliate marketing, uh, and it's still a massive drive for me. So back staying with my original point that you niche down okay and i want to i want you guys to make sure that you hear and understand this that jake has a passion he has an interest and he has something that he's knowledgeable about specifically when you're marketing what is the most important thing for you to understand how to speak to somebody's pains and and desires right how to speak somebody's language how to speak the language that's already happening inside of their head and if you're um, somebody who's not a, a Christian, somebody who's not a Christian entrepreneur, somebody who's not a Christian, you may not be able to do that. But Jake can. Here's the here's the point, though. You have a passion. You have something that you're interested in. And there's a possibility you could take that and niche down to speak to those people specifically like Jake did with his digital ebook, which essentially if we're if we're. If we simplify this, Jake, it's really just somebody could do this by just writing a a, a word document or a a um, a what do we call it in Mac a word document or excuse me a word document or a um, a pages file and then turn it into a PDF and call it you know online marketing for Christian entrepreneurs online marketing yep. for woodworking people online marketing for dog lovers whatever you yep. wanted to do. Now all of a sudden you have an ebook that you can give away as a bonus for that. But now you're speaking directly to an audience. And how did you come up with that idea? How did you bridge those two together to niche down? And then how has that worked out for you? Yeah. Well, uh, in the very beginning, I knew I wanted to talk about finances. This is just something that's a passion of mine. I've always enjoyed, but I don't get a massive outlet for it in ministry. Like that's the one thing that I just don't get to do a ton. I get to do it right. some, but not a ton. Right. Um, so I knew that was the direction I was going. And then I just obviously have a very deep connection uh, with other believers. So the mission statement of my business is to help Christians achieve financial freedom so they can more effectively fulfill the mission to which God has called them. Uh, so within that big, broad category – I started creating kind of sub niches within it. Yeah. Um, like, okay, one way that I can help you develop financial freedom is by creating an online business. Uh, one way I can help you uh, create financial freedom is you already have this business. How can I help you with lead generation? Right. Uh, and like, I, I get the question all the time. Hey, I'm not a believer. Will you still help me? Absolutely. It's not meant to be exclusive, sure. but it's just that I have a deep level, a, a deep foundation with this group of people already. Sure. Why not build on that? Totally. Um, and you're knowledgeable about it. I, I want to make what we're talking about applicable to you because it's easier for people to see the differences than the similarities. We always tend to focus on the differences. And even if you don't have a deep connection, what I'm telling you guys is that if you have an interest or if, you, if you're if you knowledgeable about a specific topic, 
um, you can you can connect with those people. And sometimes it might not be super like sometimes if you're in a super subcategory of like car lovers, maybe you just broaden it up to be car lovers or something. But I, I, I urge you and I invite you guys to be creative in terms of different um, different offers or different bonuses or different front end really is all it is is a front end lead page that that is specific to a type of person that would make them when they land on that page feel really like this is for me yeah. wow this is for me and that's ultimately what writing copy is all about it's it's about when somebody lands on that page or creating a sales message to sell your product it's when somebody lands on that page you are speaking so specifically to them that they're like, this is for me. Like yeah. you even might want the person to get a little bit sweaty. You might want their heart to beat a little bit faster, their stomach to turn a little bit because as they're watching your message or reading your copy, they go, this person really understands me. And every single human being's mission in life is to feel, I believe this, is to feel heard, it's to feel understood, it's to get validated, it's to be seen. And when in so many people, Jake, go throughout their life and they're not seen, but they don't feel seen by anybody. And yeah. so the moment that your copy, your video, and especially if you're communicating that to somebody, if you, if you actually get on video, I always try to mi mix my, my marketing sales pages with both video and copy. Because when they now connect a face with the words that are deeply connecting with their scenario situation or who they are now all of a sudden they instantly have rapport with you you instantly have rapport with them and it's just that is the power of this marketing that we do and For that sure. we teach so you continued your journey now you're relating you're finding these different sub niches of people that you can talk more you know, directly to take us through you you were doing the boot camp. Did you immediately you, you find TikTok? Like how did that transition happen and take us? Cause that was February. Did you say that was, when was that? That was in 2019, wasn't it? When I first started TikTok was what about mid December. Okay. So, but I'm talking about the boot camp cause that's essentially the boot where camp we was October, okay. October 1st through 30th. Okay. So take us through the transition from the boot camp then to the end of 2019. Yeah, it was just pumping YouTube content, just absolutely pumping YouTube content every day. And it became to, it got to a point where it wasn't sustainable. Like I knew I was going to hit a brick wall at some point. Like I, I can't, I, I can't do 18 hours days every day. Um, so I knew I wanted to keep a YouTube strategy because it's proven. I mean, this is, yeah. Uh, we have seen so many guys now prove that this works when you follow the YouTube strategy. It's going to take time. It's going to take yes. effort. It's going to take dedication, but it works. Yeah. Um, so I want to keep that as part of my strategy, but if I was going to catch up to some of these guys and really compete with them, I had to add something, which is when I brought the TikTok side of it in. You wanted the, and I want you guys to really dial in what he just said. YouTube is proven, but it's a long-term strategy. And I joked with Dom yesterday. I said, you know, I was actually a little bit pissed when you guys came <laughs> up and, and we're, we're having all this quick and easy success because here I am over here preaching and teaching, you know, these strategies that are not overnight success methods. They are long term. Right. And of course, I joke when I say I'm a little bit pissed. It's just part of the right. Just part are you? I think you were a little bit. No, I wasn't. <laughs> but I like to say I was because it's funny. Um, and, it, and it makes for good copy. But uh, sure. but. Yeah, man. So 2019, you ha tell us the I stumbled upon TikTok story. Like, how did yeah. that go down? Like, what happened when you first logged on and saw a bunch of teenagers? Man, well, at that point, it really was like the TikTok of today is very different than the TikTok of December. It literally was just people dancing all over the place. Like, I didn't really know if my audience there was one account that I found. Um, it had like 300,000 followers at the time. But the strategy that you see on my TikTok account right now. Uh, of literally pointing at a screen and, and yeah. just going from spot to spot is what I saw. This dude had 300,000 followers doing. Wow. I'm like, I'm not smart, but I can do that. Like who can't point at a screen and narrate in the background. Right. Um, so, so start for everybody. So you no, know, it's just 
literally and tell us your TikTok <laughs> handle so people can go and actually look at your TikTok and see what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. Add Jake the three, J A K E T H E three. Okay. So, um, what he's talking about is literally having an <laughs> image up on the computer or a slide or, or just the screen. Like I could literally do a TikTok right now. And maybe I will here in a second of the act of just our computer screen interviewing, you know, TikTok legend, Jake Thornhill right now. And it's just, it's just shooting a 15 second video of the computer screen. So I wanted to explain that. So you saw dude doing this 300,000 followers. You go, I'm not a genius, but I can do this. <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing, right? So I've made maybe 60 YouTube videos now. I have, I don't know, maybe five of them that are over a thousand views. I looked at my TikTok page this morning. I might have five videos that are under 2000 views. Mm. Like through, through, I don't know, a couple hundred videos at this point. Right. Like I, and maybe not, they're not equal. Maybe they're not the same value and the same quality, but even if they're not the amount of views you can get, I have some that have 700,000 views. I'm not getting that on YouTube anytime in the near future. So why would I not experiment? Like, why would I not practice a 15 to 60 second video if it has the potential? I don't know who it is. So if you're watching, you can take credit for this. There's someone uh, within the legendary marketer community who started, I think she said two weeks ago, uh, she's got 8,000 followers so far, but she had a video. I think it was her maybe third video, 1.5 million views. I don't know who she is. I saw her just on some random page yesterday. 1.5 million views. Where else can you get that right now? It's a no brainer. Yeah, it's insanity. It's insanity. I'm actually just loving sitting back. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I need to get on TikTok as well and really start banging out. This is my public declaration here, right? <laughs> live. Um, because, you know, there's just no excuse. There's no excuse. I'm saying it in front of you guys right now. Um, I've sat back. I was one of the dummies who, you know, said this is just for kids or I don't need another method to do right now. But it's just too easy, Jake. It's 15 it seconds. It's 60 seconds. So um, let's talk. And even little... if you're saying it's just a trend that's going to be gone in, in two months, why not take 10,000 views between now and, and those two months? Like, why not take that? Now, you need to move it. Like, you need to move your audience to your YouTube channel, to your email list, to other places. Yeah. But why not take that personal branding opportunity that we have right now? Well, I think that focusing on a channel and then moving people from that channel to another channel is a smart strategy in and of itself. You know, I mean, instead of trying to be a rock star on every platform to essentially try uh, to, to, you know, really focus with your content. How many videos are you doing a day on TikTok right now? My strategy right now is three to five, but I've done one to three. Like you don't need to start at three to five, but three to five is where I'm at right now. Are you doing any personal reach out or with TikTok or do you basically just post the video and it's just about kind of there's no real direct messaging or like how, you know, on Facebook? I'll reply to every private. comment, but I don't I don't do DMs. OK. Are there DMs on TikTok, though? There are. OK, there are. so you, can you do have to somebody. be following the person. They have to be following you. But yeah. Oh, you have to be following them and they have to be following you. Okay. Which does make it a little a little different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's really just about right now. Anyways, we don't know if this is going to last, but it's really It'll just about, it. well, just going viral. I mean, it's yep. it's just a place to go viral right now and just get tons of views. And I mean, in case you guys don't know, I mean, going viral is essentially the the it's the um, it's it's free advertising because typically I don't know if it was you or if it was somebody else who showed the 938, 938, almost a million views in the last 28 days. But mm -hmm. that's on TikTok. Okay. It's one of you guys four, but you obviously have, you know, similar numbers going on right now with your TikTok. Yeah. In order to get that, if I was to get 938, 938,000, almost a million views on a video ad on Facebook, we're talking about. <sighs> We're talking about thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, you yeah. know. So, and I, I, I mean, our our sales video, I look into our back end statistics for our sales video, and we're talking about millions of views on that sales video over the last several several years. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it, it's just, and I'm just comparing to, you know, a, a YouTube channel, um, you know, getting you know, in order to get 50,000 views, you got to work pretty hard on your yeah, entire you know. channel from, from scratch anyways. 
So the, the bottom line is, is, is I, I don't want to get into rambling about the value of, of views, but it's, in, it's, it's money, it's currency. I mean, on the internet, views are currency. So um, you're making sales right now. I want to be clear about that, that TikTok, it's not just crap traffic. I mean, these are real people who are interested in, in the things that, you know, that, 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 you know, not everybody is, but a portion of the people you're actually getting leads, you're getting sales, yeah. you're making a significant amount of money right now with this. Yeah, there was a there was a day. Um, because again, a lot of this the money really isn't what fuels me is the competition. Like I just I love competition. It's just fun for me. Um, there was a day on the leaderboard, which was just a moment of a lot of clarity. Uh, I always try to pass Big Bark. I cannot get past that sucker for the life of me. So I reached out to him to give him a hard time about it. Um, but there was one day where in the one day category, I was above him. And the seven day, I was in second place. And the third, uh, in the 30 day, I was in second place. And I'm sitting here like 90 to 95% of my traffic is coming from TikTok. Like I am driving so much stinking traffic from this app. And the fact that people still weren't using it just blows my mind. Blows, blows, blows my mind. Well, he's, he's pumped up his traffic doing something lately. Um, I haven't reached out to him and figured out what it is, but he's, he's pumped up his traffic big time. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm just, I'm on TikTok right now. I, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, you gotta be careful. Have you shot a video yet? I've got a couple on there. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's my, I'm, they're puny. I mean, I've got two, yeah. it's just, I gotta get on it. I need a boot camp myself. That's why I'm kind of <laughs> thinking about and was talking to you about a boot camp. And, uh, anyways, we'll, we'll think about that over the next 24 hours and maybe launch one. Um, so what do you, what do you, what, I mean, we're going to come out with a course here within about a week or so. You're an instructor in that course. Um, I love the, the, I love you being an instructor because you're not a, you're not a guru. You're not, you know, nobody could call you a guru. Um, it, it's, it's going to be exciting. So all of you guys are going to be able to pick up that course for a dollar. Uh, it's sort of a, a pandemic stimulus plan for everybody. Um, and what what final thoughts? I mean, what 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 sort of 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 your journey? I, I think we could sit here and talk for an hour about sure. all the things that you have learned. But what sure. would you say your biggest takeaway is so far in this in this whole online marketing journey? I mean, if, if you oh, could look back thank you for that question and tell yourself or talk to yourself knowing what you know now when you first started, what, what, what would that conversation look like? Oh, thank you so much for asking that. Um, so the first few months, it was, I'm just going to make money with this. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email every single person on Craigslist and I'm going to get sales doing it. Uh, <laughs> the moment of clarity for me was in, in January where I really began to realize that this is about serving people. Mm. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When that switch happened in my mind, when I really began to realize that I can serve Christian entrepreneurs, that I can serve people who who need to find another stream of income and just don't have it. Uh, so recently, I, I've started really reaching out to a lot of fellow pastors because I, my goal is to swarm Legendary Marketer with other pastors because I think what we do fits so well into the strategies that you guys teach. Mm. Um, talking about masterminds and events, right. we run masterminds and events all the stinking time. We do multiple a week. We teach on a daily basis. So like we do series all the time. And when it comes to coaching, like as a Christian, we are called to disciple younger believers. This is something that we practice all the stinking time. So coaching is a natural fit for us. Um, digital products, creating courses, again, just things we do all the time. So I, I have been trying to reach out to some of my brothers and sisters who are going through some of those same struggles that I did, mm -hmm. uh, who just don't have I'm actually in a very good situation as a youth pastor. My church pays me very well, um, but I know a lot of people who are not in that well of a situation. Um, so just reaching out to them saying, hey, God, I'm, not, I'm really not trying to sell you on this, right. but I understand that pain point. Like I understand that you need something to supplement your income. And I, I think that what you've learned in ministry is such a smooth fit into this. Um, so that's become something for me. Like I believe that I have the ability to serve people. And when that mind shift happened for me, uh, it changed the whole journey. And it's been so much fun. 
I love that you brought that up because for those of you out there wondering, well, is this, you know, if I buy a couple of thousand dollar course, our flagship product is called the Business Blueprints and something that Jake and many people, um, you know, are huge fans of and, 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 and kind of we all shout it from the rooftops. We're constantly making it better, giving improvements and free updates for people who bought it in years past. So we really try to serve our community with, with that product. But, you know, people often ask, well, you know, is the value going to outweigh the, 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 <laughs> the cost? And I, I think that we really undervalue just skill sets. You know, I think we undervalue skill sets because the skill set that you're learning for being able to go and take your message out, because getting a message out, whether it's a Christian message, whether it's a, 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 an a earth message, uh, you know, whether it's a climate change issue, whether I, mean, I don't care, I'm, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, what your passion is to, to be able to share it and get it out into people's heads and hearts. You got to communicate. You got to yeah. get in front of them. The first step is you got to actually get in front of them. The second step is you got to actually know how to communicate it. And that can either be through verbal or written word. There's this not rocket science. It's not changed. The medium has only changed. It's just not TV or radio anymore. It's the <laughs> internet and it's TikTok and it's YouTube and it's Facebook. And it's even better, Jake, because we get to speak to people indirectly, which is less, it's less intrusive, right? So, and it makes us the ones who become the hunted rather than the hunter. We're no longer forced to knock on doors as people who are, right? Which is what, yep. do, you, do you guys remember when people used to have to go door to door or did go door to door? Yeah, selling selling vacuum cleaners and encyclopedias, or even nowadays, we still have certain faith groups who are knocking on doors. Did you hear that? I've done news? it before, man. It's cringy. I okay, hate it. But, I don't do it often, but I've okay. done it before. No, that's great. But you know the truth is, and this is just the truth, and Jake, you're much more qualified to speak on this than I am, but the truth is when you knock on somebody's door, it's intrusive to them. Yes. And and not, and you get, you're going to get the door slammed in your face more times than you are going to have somebody say, oh, yes, I've hoped that somebody would come along and knock on my door so I could invite them in for tea, right? Especially, I don't want to talk to those people. <laughs> okay, it, so – but the versus being able to go online and put out a compelling message – that somebody's going to be scrolling, stop and watch, and now you have their attention to learn how to create that message and then to get it in front of somebody is a skill, and it's an art, yeah. and it's a science, and it doesn't always acquire. This is something that I think is so important because we don't just sell business opportunities here. We teach skills in, in Legendary. It's not just about acquiring these skills so you can make money with them. It's so you can also become a better communicator, become more influential, because if you want to get more of what you want in life or if you want to share more of what you're passionate about, you have to improve your communication skills and your ability to get your message in front of people. There's no other way about it. The, and you know what? The investment, whether it's a couple hundred, a dollar, a couple hundred, a couple thousand dollars, in my opinion, Jake, that's priceless. I'm with you. That's been my experience. I, I, I completely when, agree. People, I still see every day the skepticism in people. You know, they, they'll they even buy a challenge, go through our challenge for $7. We were joking about this. It's, it, you know, and then some of them will ask for, it's like, give me my $7 back. It's very rarely happens. But when it does, it's always laughable. But then you also have people who are just so skeptical and it's like friend it's seven dollars it's a dollar it's a couple hundred it's a couple thousand i'm not trying to minimize the amount of money that anything is to anybody but yeah. you're never going to get something i mean and you know this better than anybody faith is about taking a leap of faith it's about doing and believing something without particularly knowing the outcome yeah. that's what life's about that's what life's about. So I think that there's a there's a lot to take away from this conversation this morning. Hopefully you can be inspired to look at your journey here online, whether you're beginning, in the middle, 
or just thinking about starting it as bigger, as bigger than just money, as bigger than just an app on a phone. Because TikTok is not the point, guys. It's not the point. It's just, it's the mechanics. It's not the dynamics. The dynamics are, Jake, have you grown as a person throughout this journey? Ooh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been, um, I, I mean, serving is what I do in ministry, but I think it's just taking me a level deeper yeah. um, to really recognize, because I wasn't a marketer, right? Like I didn't, I didn't know this stuff before, but to notice people's pain points has truthfully even helped me on the ministry side and has grown me as, as a man and as a pastor. Mm. Um, but the impact you're able to have through this, not only financially, but as you're saying, on other areas of people's lives, is priceless. It is. And, you know, learning these strategies, it doesn't matter what, you, you know, it just, I think it makes you not only a more evolved, more gritty, it can increase your dedication, your discipline, you know, being an entrepreneur and being responsible, being the boss, everybody wants to be the boss, but nobody wants to pay the cost. <laughs> True. You know, it, it, it not only can make you, it can not only birth your best self, right? And, and really help you elevate into the best version of who you are. But it also makes you just cooler in general because now all of a sudden there are youth pastors on TikTok. There are youth pastors oh, don't on shoot. social media. Yep. I mean, and now all of a sudden I can talk to multiple different generations, okay, of people that that I couldn't talk to before. And I think in life, if we wonder oftentimes why we have a difficult time connecting or influencing younger generations or older, it's because we're disconnected from the things that they're passionate about. And so if you are an older person, if you're somebody who, you know, feels disconnected from younger generations, then learning these skills can also connect you with your children with. Uh, so I don't know. I guess I could list the benefits all day long, Jake, of 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 somebody using their time to improve their skill sets to not only create an additional source of income for themselves, but also to learn skills to be able to get their message and their mission furthered in life. Um, I, I could I could list the benefits. I'll stop there. Give us some closing thoughts before we leave. Any piece of advice, final advice or wisdom from your journey that you'd share with, with the folks listening? Yeah, man, so many I could leave, but I think I'll leave with this one. Uh, and it's just re really reiterating what Dave's already said is view the journey at, about the impact, like focus on the impact that you are making in people's lives and not just about the money. I, I saw so many people in the beginning getting started about the same time I was and have fallen away because it was all about like, I've got to make a hundred dollars in the next 24 hours. I've got to make a hundred dollars in the week. And truthfully, if that's the mindset, you're, you're probably going to fail because that's an unrealistic expectation. I personally thought I was going to make $10,000 in two weeks and that didn't quite happen. Um, but when you view the, the joy of the journey, like when you really enjoy every single day, the impact you're making on people's lives. And yeah, you get rewarded financially for that. Uh, but when you find joy in that journey, it's going to be a lot of fun and you're going to find success. I, I've yet to find someone in the Internet marketing world who is loving the journey who hasn't been rewarded from it. Uh, so that'd be what I'd end uh, with. And guys, thank you all for taking the time to watch this this morning. And Dave, did really appreciate the opportunity to share. Dude, we're uh, blessed and honored to have you as a part of our community. Keep up the great Thanks, work. Man. You guys join us every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Wake up legend. This is Dave Sharp for Jake Thornhill. Peace. Peace.